Hey YouTube, what is going on? Thanks for checking out the Straight SRT8 YouTube channel where we discuss all things SRT8 related. Today I want to talk to you guys about batteries. Uh, so batteries are a very critical part of the way a vehicle functions. I mean, think about it, if your battery is dead, your car won't start. Um, that kind of defeats the whole point of having a car in the first place because then you have no mobility. Um, so batteries are super, super critical. Um, especially in today's modern cars, we have more and more power draw on those batteries. Um, louder sound systems require more power from the battery. Um, more onboard diagnostics, um, more gauges, um, more auxiliary devices plugged in, um, charging our phone, GPS units, radar detectors, backup cameras, uh, and dash cams. So there's a ton of power draw on batteries, making them even more critical today than they were in the past. So I want to discuss um, two, two batteries really that I, I purchased. Um, one you can get from a local uh, advanced auto parts store or auto parts store near you. Uh, it's the Die Hard Platinum Battery. And another one is a more premium battery that you can buy online um, from Odyssey. It's a performance line of batteries. Um, so they're both, uh, they're both AGM batteries. Um, so in typical today's batteries configurations, you can really get two more primary batteries for automotive. You have your flooded lead acid, which are just called flooded lead acid batteries. Uh, they're the more old school batteries. Um, our Jeeps come with them stock. Um, they came stock for many, many years in, in a lot of cars. And then you have a more premium, more newer technology called AGM, which is absorbed glass mat. Um, still uses lead, still uses acid inside there, um, but there's a little bit of a difference for more of a uh, performance increase in power for AGM, just a little bit. Uh, but where they really shine is they are truly maintenance free uh, and they also have a longer service life. Um, so a, a typical battery may last you a couple years. These are some of them uh, manufacturers actually guaranteed to last two or three times that. Um, so more of a higher upfront cost, but you get that longer service life out of the battery. So in the end, it ends up being a, a better option uh, financially. Now when it comes to these batteries, they're not all created the same. Um, when it first came to this AGM technology, um, one of the main players out there was Optima Batteries. Again, you can go to an advanced auto parts store. Uh, I think AutoZone sells them as well. And they had those like those spiral cases. Um, so there are six of them in series to give you your 12 ish 13 volts or so. Um, but they're the spiral cases. Um, Optima has uh, the red uh, and the yellow for automotive and then the blue for marine batteries. So that technology is now available in a wide array of manufacturers, including, as I mentioned, Die Hard series, which you can get from Advanced Auto Parts, and then other premium brands as well, such as Odyssey. Um, so I wanted to do a comparison. So I, I bought the Odyssey battery, and I bought the Die Hard battery, and I want to do testing for them. Um, so right now I'm charging both batteries. I'm using my battery charger. I'll have the information below in the description. I'll also use a battery tester. Again, I'll have the information below in the description as well. Um, these to me were the, the best combination of cost and value added from a battery charger and battery testing standpoint. And then we're going to compare them for the diehard battery, the platinum version, which is like 250 ish bucks, 220 bucks. Uh, compared to the Odyssey battery, I think it's like $440. Again, I'll have descriptions and pricing below. So I want to see, is there a difference in this cost? Um, is the diehard battery just as good as the optimum battery? Is there a big difference in initial testing? And then what are my thoughts uh, for a longer period of time? So the Odyssey battery, brand new, um, just fully charged it. And then the diehard battery, used it for about six months or so. Um, I already have some thoughts on the diehard battery. I'm going to reserve those to the end of the video though. Um, for right now though, let's get into quick testing and see which battery actually performs better on numbers. And then I'll go into reality. Um, one quick note though, um, so both batteries are physically the same. They're plus or minus like a, a half inch or a quarter inch from each other. Um, when you call, talk about installing a battery down below on the passenger side, uh, I have another video talking about how to install a battery. There's not much space there. So your length, your width, and your height, there, there's no space at all for extra um, like maneuverability. So the Odyssey battery line does have an extreme version. Um, so I bought the performance battery. There is an extreme version that's roughly the same length and width, but an inch taller in height. Um, that gives you extra power for even more um, auxiliary driving devices. So maybe you have a, a very large sound system in the back or a big amp. Um, that can handle that power and starting the car um, non-stop for, for an issue. That's an inch taller though. Uh, there is no space under here without modifying your vehicle. There's no space to fit better than it's an inch taller. So when you go online to Odyssey's website, you use your battery um, tool. It'll tell you the best battery for your vehicle. For Jeep SRTs, it is the one that I purchased, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but be warned, if you try and purchase the extreme version, it's a little more expensive. It has a little more headroom for extra power. 
but you can't physically fit it without altering the battery space uh, under your passenger seat. So just keep that in mind. Um, for right now though, let's get to testing and see which battery actually performs better. All right, so these are the two batteries. Um, right now I'm, I'm finishing charging the diehard battery. But we have our diehard platinum, AGM technology, and we have our Odyssey performance line, again, AGM technology. Um, now when it comes to pricing, I was a little bit off in the pricing of these two batteries. Uh, so the Odyssey, with the one on the right here in red, is $364, and then the Die Hard Platinum on the left was $231. So a little more expensive for the Odyssey compared to the Die Hard. Um, technically, though, for specs, we're at 850 cold cranking amps and 140 minutes of reserve power. And over here, I'm saying for cold cranking amps, we're at 850, and an extra 15 minutes, of 155 total for reserve power. Um, size, again, exactly the same for the Die Hard versus the Odyssey. Uh, cost, this is more expensive. On paper, though, dimensions, are our power draw is basically the same. Um, same voltage, same um, current carrying capability uh, for the same size. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into testing the Odyssey battery. I did purchase this guy right here. It is the Foxwell uh, battery analyzer, the BT705. Um, did quite a bit of work comparing this model to other versions, um, and this to me was the best one for the money, mostly because uh, down the road when I'm trying to test batteries, um, this has very easy to read and very easy to follow step-by-step -step advice on the screen for diagnostics and for information, so it's super important to me, and it makes it easier to understand down the road when using this battery charger or battery tester, I mean, in 10 or so years. So I'm go ahead and look this guy up. It's a very firm clasp, by the way, and they're, they are made out of copper. So here we go. We're going to use this together for the first time. So we got our battery power right here, our 12.92 volts. All right, so a 12 volt system. Yep, it is out of vehicle, correct. Posts, meaning the terminals. These are on the top. It is an AGM. Again, it's an absorbed glass mat battery, you can tell. Because right here you have your AGM, and then also for your diehards right there, got AGM. So we're gonna do AGM. Um, the regular option up top is your flooded lead acid battery option. That's usually OEM. All right, we're measuring cold cranking apps. On this battery again, it says 850. So we're gonna go over here and adjust this guy to 850. Enter, and now it's going to test. All right, good battery. It's brand new. Uh, so measured power, it's able to put out 862 cold cranking amps, and it's rated for 850, so it's higher than its rated output, and the battery is in good voltage, and it's at 12.9 volts. So one thing worth mentioning, um, it's a 12-volt battery. So why is it measuring 12.9 volts? Um, so inside of this battery, there are actually multiple smaller batteries, and that's common for, for every battery. Um, so inside here you have six total batteries, each at about 2.2 volts. Um, so six times 2.2 gives you like 13 point something, um, or around, depending on the charge of battery, 12.9. Um, so this guy, again, over 12 volts. Now you're also going to notice, as I mentioned in a previous video, when you're charging this battery, your car's alternator puts out about 13 or 14 volts because you need the extra power in order to fully charge this battery all the way up. So 12.9 volts and then measured at 862 cold cranking amps. And then everything else says it's very good. Your resistance between your positive and negative terminal, extremely small. So overall battery's in very good health. Not surprising at all as it's a brand new battery. What I'm gonna do next is let this guy finish charging and then do the same test on him. Now when we talk about charging, I did purchase this, uh, Schumacher battery charger. I think it's an excellent battery charger for the money. Um, so it does charge your 12 volt batteries. It has three options here. You can either do a longer term slow charge, which is your six to two uh, amp charging. Um, your maintenance charging, meaning the battery's trying to get charged fast at 30 amps, and then your jump start at 100 amps. Uh, and then it also does tests for AGM and for your standard flooded acid battery. And when it's done, this little icon here turns green and tells the battery's fully charged. It also does diagnostics. It's kind of really hard to see here, but it does tell you if your battery is shot and can't be charged. Um, that's a very nice feature. So I use this guy. I do a quick charge at 30 amps, kind of just dumping power into the battery. 
and then take the charger back off, wait a little bit, and finish it off with the very slow charge just to make sure the battery is truly topped off. All right, so here we are, fully charged battery. Let's go ahead and repeat this test. battery meter let's go ahead and hook it back up all right so 12.44 volts doing a 12 volt system out of vehicle top side AGM and cold cranking amps 850. Let's test it. All right, so it says it's good. It says it needs a recharge. Only at 12.44 volts. It measures 712 cold cranking amps compared to the rated 850. So it's a, quite a bit lower from what's rated for. Um, your MR is good there. So what that really is, is basically saying is that this battery is good, um, but it's saying that it's acting like it's dead. Um, obviously, the battery is not dead. You know, it's, I've been, it's been fully charged more than once now. Um, so before we get into why it's acting the way it's acting, let's go ahead and crunch some data uh, in Excel, and we'll show the percentage of power for the diehard versus the Odyssey battery, and then try and explain that a little bit better uh, using some data, and then get back to a final summary in a second. So let's get to it. So let's get into the analysis portion of the video. So on the screen right here, we have a battery. It, it does show six individual cells, which are about 2.2-ish volts each, which gives you a total of about 12 volts uh, by design, but in reality, it's more about 13 volts in practice. So this is basically how both flooded lead acid batteries and AGM batteries look on the inside. So let's get over here to compare the Odyssey battery, which is the Performance Series, versus the Die Hard Platinum. So first, let's look at voltage. Uh, so our voltage again, 12.9, almost 13 volts for Odyssey, and 12.44 for the Die Hard Platinum. Um, I'll explain why it's a little bit lower in a minute. With voltage, we also have current. Um, so again, for the Odyssey, our current's at 862 amps, and for the Die Hard's a little bit lower at 712. So the way you actually measure power in a battery, it's using Ohm's Law, uh, actually a derivation of Ohm's Law, which is P equals VI. So power equals voltage times current. Now before I discuss power, let's discuss a visual way to kind of identify this. Um, so think of a, a flowing river. Your voltage is how deep that river is, how much potential it has. And your current is how fast the water is actually moving, same as current in a river, the speed of the water flow. So you multiply your voltage times your current, you get power. And you can kind of compare, compare power to like a, almost like a dam. How much power is, is that dam holding back from the river? If you were to unleash that river right away, this is how much power that would have. And batteries are very similar. We have voltage, we have our current, and we have our power. So for the Odyssey power, this is what really your car uses to start the car. The more power, the better your battery is going to be. So for our Odyssey, we're at, uh, let's see, 11,119 uh, watts, so 11 kilowatts. And for our power for our platinum battery, we're at about 8.8 .8 kilowatts. So pretty big difference there. When you actually measure that difference, it's 125.5%. So comparing the power in the Odyssey to the power in the Die Hard, again, Die Hard's been a little bit used, you have a 125% difference in power. That's a big difference. So let's compare it to actually the advertised power. Um, so on all of our batteries, we have a voltage and we have a CCA, a cold cranking amps. So this compares the cold cranking amps of the advertised power versus the actual power. So for the Odyssey, your extra power is at 109%, so a little bit higher than advertised. And for your diehards at 86.8%, so it's lower than advertised. So a pretty big difference here comparing what you're buying versus what you're actually getting. Again, this is a little bit skewed because the battery's been used for a little bit. But when you, when you add everything together, basically, it's showing that the reason my car is behaving better with my new battery is because I have 125% extra power available. And you take your 86 minus this, um, gives you your true difference, 
Um, but comparing the ratio of the two, it's 125% more power. So quite a bit more power available in the, uh, the Odyssey Performance Series battery compared to the Die Hard, which explains why the car is behaving better, why it's starting better more repeatedly. So this is kind of the, the analysis portion, but I want to explain what the issue is with the Die Hard battery. So let's get back in the car and walk through exactly what the actual problem is with the battery. And keep in mind this image right here, showing your different cells. Um, so as we get into the analysis portion inside the car, um, keep in mind that as batteries get used, you hold less and less charge in these each individual cells, which reduces your overall charge for the entire battery. Um, this happens from damage, so especially if you're shorting the positive and negative terminals, you have damaging these individual cells, and they hold less voltage and they hold less current, and that can result in what we're seeing here, a lower actual power for the battery. So we can see from the data that the Die Hard Platinum battery uh, currently performs much worse than the Odyssey Performance Line batteries do. Now, I want to explain why the Die Hard's having a hard time. Um, so when I first bought the Die Hard battery, um, again, it's the Platinum version, I had issues off the bat. Uh, I mean, instantaneously the car started very well, behaved very well, performed very well. Uh, but then, in the subsequent weeks since I bought the battery, the car started to perform worse. I uh, had a harder time turning over. Still turned over, but not, not as easily. And especially when it's very, very cold out, and I tried doing a cold start in the car, it would short the battery out. Uh, this is extremely frustrating. I thought it was my actual starter. Uh, it turns out there actually was a starter issue initially. I'll replace it, but I have a brand new starter now, and the issue keeps happening. Um, when I do a cold start, I'm talking like almost zero degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the battery literally shorts out, you know, right next to us in the passenger seat. It's a huge concern. So when you keep shorting this battery out, I want you to envision those cells that I was showing in the previous portion of the video. Uh, those cells get damaged. You're not pulling so much power through those cells, you actually damage the battery itself. And it holds less voltage, and then it holds less current, and then eventually holds ultimately less power. So as you short it out, and then you kind of start it and short it out and start it and short it out, um, the more shorts you get, the worse the battery becomes. Which is why the battery right now is rated at 80, I think it was 4% of its total life. When it was initially much higher than that, it was over 100%. Um, so in, in comparing new battery to new battery, the Die Hard Platinum and the Odyssey Performance are exactly the same for the most part. Um, very similar voltages, very similar cold cranking amps. Um, out of the box, are both very well. But when it gets into a more long-term use, even more short-term use, the Die Hard battery just falls flat on its face uh, very quickly. So I've had the Odyssey battery installed for about a week now, and I've done various like cold tests, or almost like torture tests in the battery. Or I've had the car sit outside where it's extremely cold for days. Had all that fluid and all the oil drained to the very bottom of the motor. So there's higher friction to try and start it over. Um, takes more power just to try and start the battery because it's a lot colder outside, and the battery's performed uh, well time and time again. I'm going to keep doing this test um, as much as I can. I'm actually going to uh, out of the country for a few weeks. So it's going to be an even better test when I get back to be able to test this battery out to make sure it performs very well. Uh, I'll probably post a video update in a significant future. Uh, but for right now, after an equal amount of testing for both batteries, at this point in time, the Odyssey performs much, much better than Die Hard does. Now, the Odyssey also costs a lot more money. And again, you get what you pay for. Uh, AGM technology is the same for both batteries. But your Odyssey costs twice as much. Now, why is that? It could be because the Odyssey has a brand name um, of higher value than a Die Hard brand name. It could be your volume of sales for Die Hard's much uh, higher, which means your costs lower compared to the Odyssey battery. Um, but it also has to do with some of the technology. I'm pretty sure that there's better technology in the Odyssey performance battery than there is in the Die Hard battery, which is why it has that almost twice as much uh, cost difference. Or a third as much. I forget the actual numbers. <clears throat> but point being that so far the Odyssey performs much better. Um, anyway, guys, that is it for this video. A uh, ton more content on the way. If this is your first time watching my channel, consider subscribing. I have again a lot of content on the way. Um, there is also another video shown right now on your screens. You may be interested in watching that video. Um, it's based on your suggest. It's based on a suggestion from YouTube based on what you guys like to watch. Anyway, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to drop them below. Again, I'll have descriptions in the link below, providing links to the Die Hard battery, uh, providing links to the Odyssey battery and cost, and some quick stats that I threw in the video previously. So again, you got questions, drop them below. If not, I'll see you guys soon.